Melissa here from Girl Gone Fishing and today I wanted to show you guys how I set up my GoPro cameras on my Hobie Lynx so I can film while I'm out fishing on the water. So check it out. So I'm going to start with my front camera which is obviously the one that faces you most of the time and it's the one I talk into. It's the one I use for like the grip and grins like you know where you're holding the fish and you can extract a still or get a picture with one of those. So let me show you uh, how I have this one set up. So for my front GoPro, I have it mounted on a Yak Attack Panfish Pro mount. This is 33 inches long, which to me gets the camera just far enough away that it gets in like, you know, that whole frame of view there, but it's not too far away that it can still hear you talk. So uh, this, I've tried a couple different options for this front mount and this Yak Attack Panfish Pro is the best I've found for my needs. Now one of the most important things for me is being able to get it on and off the boat quickly since I car top and I have to strip this totally down at the end of each day and build it every morning at the boat ramp. So to get this one on and off, you just pop that off wiggle it free and there you go. So I, I drive my kayak around like this. When it's time at the boat ramp, I just pop that on, lock it into place. That is the Yak Attack lock and load base on my Hobie H-Rail here, that uh, Strictly Sailing Kayak custom made for me. So next is the back GoPro. And the priority for this GoPro, in addition to getting a quick installation and removal so that I don't have to spend a lot of time at the boat ramps, is it needs to be able to capture cast to catch footage, which means over my shoulder from the time I make my cast up until I hook the fish and then I'm fighting the fish in and then the fish jumps and then I land the giant fish next to the kayak. This camera has to get that all in the frame. And because my Lynx doesn't have anything back here, that I can easily install this camera on, I have chosen to put it on my H-Crate. So these, the H-Crate, one of the great things about it is that it has rails just like uh, your regular Hobie kayak does. These rails mimic just the regular H-Rails on a, on a kayak and on like a lot of the Hobie kayaks. So I'm able to install my camera mount on the H-Rail. And this year I've upgraded the stability of that rail mount by getting one of the Yak Attack Mighty Mount Duo rail adapters. So instead of just being the put on and clamp it closed kind of uh, rail thing that they have for all the other accessories, which work really fantastic, I've never had a problem with them, this Mighty Mount clamps on there in a two-part assembly and you can kind of tighten it down and it really holds it uh, a little more firmly and securely. So for my back GoPro mount, I have chosen the Yak Attack Boomstick Pro. And so there's my Mighty Mount Duo Rail Adapter. And this one comes on and off the same way that the front one does. Real easy on and off. When I, when I get to the boat ramp, I just take this out of my trunk, pop it on right there, click it closed, and it is stable and ready to go. So. This uh, Yak Attack Boomstick Pro is 51 and a half inches long. And there is my GoPro setup. Now, as far as powering my cameras go, I have been through the whole lineup of options and possibilities from starting with using batteries. And then I had a, a battery charger on the boat and I would be like cycling through batteries, some on the charger, some ready to go, some empty needing charging, some in the camera. And then I realized that when the battery's in, the camera overheats and shuts down faster. When I'm fishing and the sun comes out and my cameras start shutting off, it is really annoying. So the things I I've found to limit the amount of shutdowns you get, you take the battery out and you power it from an external power source. Um, first, I started with just the phone power bricks, you know, but those actually seem to cycle on and off with their charging power. Um, I guess it doesn't matter with a phone, but with my GoPro, it was constantly like losing power when the phone charging brick cycled off. And with the, the, the GoPro doesn't have a battery in it, if there's no external power, then you don't have a camera. So I finally stepped up to a true boat battery. 
battery um, going with some Dakota lithium batteries and that has been a fantastic solution because it has finally made it to where I don't have to spend a good portion of my day out on the water babysitting the GoPro battery charger situation. So let me show you what I use. So I keep all of my batteries right here in the H crate on my links because as you can see like right now my links is naked of everything but the GoPro just so it was real clear to see but you can tell there's no other place for storage right so this H crate is crucial to me for storage so I have the the yak power box with batteries in there and that's what I have the GoPros plugged in right now so I use this port right here for uh, my fish finder and then this port right here has my back uh, camera and my front camera and I keep this Dakota lithium power box on the boat as a backup because it also can power two USB things. So sometimes I charge my phone with that. Sometimes I just have it on the boat in case uh, the battery, something happens like that. But that's kind of my backup battery. Let me show you what's inside this box here. I got this box from Brian up at Strictly Sailing Kayak. He set it up for me. This has more than enough power to run everything on my boat, my two cameras, my phone, and my fish finder for the entire day, if not like a whole weekend. So the only time I've ever run this dead is after I forgot to charge it after a, a two days of fishing. <laughs> So here's a couple of lessons I've learned along the way that might help you skip through the learning curve and just go right to success with your GoPros. This is my emergency GoPro kit and uh, I'll show you what I always carry with me. All right, so this is the GoPro emergency kit that at some point you will wish you had one or more of these things while you're out on the water, or maybe your buddy's going to need them. So what we have here is we have spare cords. That is important because these cords will sometimes fall in the water, and once it's hit the water, it's pretty much useless, or sometimes they just stop working. So, so many times I've had to switch cords in the middle of a day. Um, even though I don't use the internal batteries, it's good to have one. Um, there's been times where I wanted to take my camera off the boat and go do something and I did what wasn't able to do that you know because I didn't have power so always have an, an internal battery these thumb screws man you really want some spare thumb screws with you because it's what holds on this right here and if that works its way loose on a bumpy day on the water and it falls out you are just in a lot of trouble you don't have a camera anymore and sd cards my goodness this is like one of the number one things always have a couple spare sd cards because your camera will definitely at some point just tell you sd card error and uh, if you don't have another one you don't film for the rest of the day Speaking of SD cards, if you Google it, there's a list online from GoPro of approved brands and types of SD cards that will work with the cameras. So these cameras, the SD card has to be pretty fast to be able to handle the data, especially with the newer GoPros. And so I've switched over exclusively to the SanDisk Extreme Plus. I used to do the SanDisk Extreme, but the newer GoPros really want an even faster card. So my favorite right now are these SanDisk Extreme Plus 512 gig Gigabytes. that'll pretty much let you like go for the whole day maybe even a second day if you're looping but uh, I have a few of these 128s too that I got on sale that were really cheap and they make really good backups so always have a couple backup SD cards and uh, check and make sure that you're buying ones that will work with your GoPro because if it's it's not just a matter of like you know maybe it won't be as good like they literally will not work uh, unless you get one that's fast enough so make sure you're getting the right kind of memory card otherwise your whole day is just a bust as far as filming goes so that's all going to go back into this fancy high-tech waterproof holder here <laughs> and then stuffed into my little uh, emergency bag with my first aid kit and my fishing license and other emergency supplies lives right there in my H crate never should come out always should stay in there and like I said if I take anything out from that kit and use it I have to remember to immediately replace it otherwise the next day you go out you won't have it on the water again so now let's take a look at the actual GoPros I use and the settings on the GoPro them, themselves
All right, so I am currently using a GoPro Hero 10 as my front camera. So you can see I have it marked with an F so that I know with the boat ramp very easily, that is the one that goes on my front camera mount. This is the one that faces me, the one I talk to. So I have it in the GoPro Media Mod and I haven't lost the little fuzzy microphone protector yet. So the Media Mod comes with a little built-in microphone, but it also has a place to plug in another external mic. This is your external power port. And this one is for um, the forward-facing screen. Now, I tried the forward-facing screen um, for the back camera so that I could see what was in the frame since I was having trouble with it cutting off my head. But what I figured out, or, or I haven't figured out, is that it seems like you have to actually charge the forward-facing screen. It's like an additional thing that goes on here. And while I was using it, like I charged it, I got it to turn on, it went for a few hours, and then it said the battery was dead and the screen wouldn't work anymore. So the last thing I need on the boat right now is another thing I have to worry about charging or making sure it's charged or making sure it works. So I'm gonna consider the forward-facing screen a failed experiment for on the water, but it might be really handy for other situations. Um, I'm not sure what they are, but uh, yeah, it, I don't think it's important for the boat though. All right, so let me show you. Getting this out of the mod, it just pops right out. And there we go. So there's the actual camera. There's my media mod. Real easy to put on and take off. And as you see, I mentioned that I don't want an internal battery in there because if I put the internal battery in there, when I am charging it with an external source, it will overheat the camera and cause it to shut off. So if you're gonna use an external power source, you have to take that internal battery out. And that's why I carry an internal battery in my little emergency GoPro kit, because if I wanna take this camera off the boat, like, you know, to go follow a cute raccoon in the woods or something, then I need to be able to either have a, a portable external charger to carry with me to keep the thing charged or have that internal battery to slip in and, and be able to take it and go so it's good to have one with you for options the opportunity like you know that that scenario has only happened once and I didn't have a battery wished I did so why not throw one in there you do have to rotate them out occasionally to make sure they're still charged but I digress <laughs> you know cute raccoons so putting this back in here oh in a in a in this one the SD slot is right here too when I used to fish with my buddy Scott on his bass boat, I always had to do this part for him because it's hard without fingernails. So, there we go. All right, and it's all ready to go. So let me show you about the settings that I use. So over the course of the last few years of fishing and doing videos with the GoPros, I've gone through a ton of different setting options and I have narrowed in on what works best for me while I'm fishing and uh, let me show it to you and maybe it'll help you and maybe you can skip all the, the messed up part that I went through before I finally figured out what was going to be the easiest thing to do that took the least amount of maintenance and attention on the water. So here is my current video setup for my front GoPro. I use the looping mode with 4K 30 frames per second shooting, 20 minute loop intervals, and linear plus setting. So what that all means, 4K 30 frames per second is the resolution that it's going to shoot with, and that is just spectacularly clear footage. Um, really great for extracting stills and looks really good on the screen. The 20 minutes is the looping, it's going to record 20 minutes and then it just writes over that 20 minutes if you don't save it. So if I'm recording and I stop the camera, it saves the previous 20 minutes of video. So it works really great because like in fishing, you have long stretches of inactivity followed by great excitement. And when I first hook that fish, I want the camera running, but I don't want to go through 15 hours of no fish to get that one fish. So with looping, it's just going to keep writing over the 20 minutes of no activity that just happened until something finally does happen and you stop the camera. It goes back and saves the 20 minutes that led up to that. Totally random woodpecker just came up and started pecking away. 
Okay, back to the camera. So here we have here we have the looping options. We've got the resolution frames per second, and I've got the interval. So look, if I click on this, there's a five minute loop, a 20 minute loop, a 60 minute loop, and a 120 minute loop. But what I've found that for fishing, the 20 minute loop is plenty. Now, this linear plus horizon leveling, what that does is it inside the camera automatically is gonna straighten the horizon. So when I'm talking to the camera, it's gonna drive me nuts if the horizon behind me is crooked. So that's perfect for me for my camera that faces me. That's what that's for, but there's other options. You can have a wide field of view or a super view that's even wider. But with these, you start to get a little bit of horizon distortion. And so I don't need a super wide shot for my front camera. I just need it to show me and the fish. All right, now here's my back GoPro. Can you guys see the difference in the settings? This one is SV, which is super view, which gives it the widest field of view of any of the setting options. Now, since my problem with the back camera was not being able to get the boat and my head into the shot, I have cycled through all the different settings and decided super view is the way to go for me with this back camera. But you can see everything else is the same as the front camera. The looping interval is still 20 minutes. The resolution is still 4K 30 frames per second. I'm not really sure what the hyper smooth does, but I let it do its thing because I haven't seen a negative impact on it. And those other two things, timer and schedule capture, I don't need those. I need it to be ready to go when I need it to record something. So the looping is perfect. So looping sounds like a great idea, right? Seems like in theory, the perfect solution. You just stop the recording and it automatically saves the past 20 minutes and you get your action on film without all that in between that you don't need. But here's my problem. How do I turn the recording off? I can't really reach the front camera without crawling up on the nose of the boat. And I can't get to the back camera unless I either beach my kayak or take it off the mount and like swing it around over the water and fiddle with it on the boat. Either one is a little dangerous and takes my time away from fishing to fiddle with the cameras. And I hate that. I don't want to spend any more time messing with the cameras when I'm supposed to be fishing. So what's my solution then? Well, the first solution is using voice control. Watch this, it's pretty cool. GoPro, start recording. GoPro, stop recording. How cool is that? So with voice control, you can turn your camera on and off, start the recording, stop the recording, make it take a picture, um, change format from video to picture. There's a whole list of voice commands that you can use. It works perfectly, except if it's windy or wavy or noisy out, then your camera can't hear you and you can't make that voice connection. So if it's decent conditions, then that is a perfect solution but you have to have other options in case this doesn't work. So let me show you what my other way to do the looping is while I'm out on the water. So the other option is controlling your GoPros with your phone using the GoPro Quick app. So with this, you can connect through Bluetooth your phone to the cameras and then you can control what it's doing. So using this app, I can turn the recording on and off by just pressing that button. It lets me know how long the recording's been going on and uh, which camera I'm using with it. So there you have it. That is my GoPro camera setup for my Hobie Lynx for this year. Um, it's a pretty big topic to cover in a relatively short video. So I tried to hit the important points, but if there's anything that you want more clarification on or anything that didn't make sense, go ahead and drop it in the comments and I will try to uh, get that sorted out for you. I want to say a huge thank you to Strictly Sailing Kayak for always being there for me and for the entire kayaking and angling communities. Um, when I need something, like if I lose something or break something, or even if I just picture an upgrade in my head, they have what I need. They can help me make that upgrade in reality. Um, they have these Yak Attack camera mounts. They have the H crates in stock. If they don't have it in stock because demand is high, they can order it for you. So check them out online or at their shop in Cincinnati. I'll put all the links in the description of the video. And uh, thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate the supportive comments, the advice. 
um, even the criticism. So thank you guys, and uh, it's just a, it's a heck of an adventure, isn't it? Like all this fishing stuff, I'm just having so much fun with it. So thanks for coming along with me, and I'll see you guys out on the water on the next one.